This is page 83 of the note spiral, and we're working on conditional probability and independence. So first off, I want to go back and talk about something that we uh, talked about on page 82, and that this is always true. Probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B over the probability of B. That is always true that there's no conditions, this is not an if situation, this is always true. So this part that I just wrote down, always true. But now we're gonna work on conditional probability in determining independence. If the probability of A, and please don't forget this line is given. If A given B equals A, then they are independent. Another way of saying is, remember, A given B always equals this. Another way of saying this is, if the intersection over B equals A, then independent. This is a big if. It's not an always. If that happens, they're independent, okay? Obviously, we can swap the things up in between the B and the A, and it would also be independent, okay? So, please remember, this is always true. A given B always equals the intersection divided by B. But if it happens to equal A, then the events are independent or the variables are independent. So let's go back to something we did a long time ago um, and recall the results of right-handedness and left-handedness. In other words, dominant hand versus IQ. Previously, we talked about these as being independent events, and we talked about them as being independent because the probabilities were independent. I mean, the, they were proportional. That's the way we determined it. And 190 divided by 1900 is 0.1. 10 divided by 100 is 0.1. This divided by this is 0.1. Because those proportions are the same all the way across, we say that they're independent. In other words, because the joint divided by the marginal, and the joint divided by the marginal equals this divided by this, we say they're independent. And I could have done the same with each one of these, all right? So we're gonna talk about um, doing independence using a conditional probability and using the multiplication rule, which we've talked about briefly, but very briefly. So please remember, by mul multiplication rule is this, if two events are independent, so if they're independent, so this is again a big if, if the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B, then the events in are independent. So we're gonna use the tables, um, the percentage on the table at the right, to determine whether or not they're independent. Well, technically I could do either. And we're looking at, we know we're working with the intersection. And I'm just going to choose because it's easy for me to do the math. Normal IQ versus left-handed. All right. So my intersection is 0.045. And it doesn't matter which, whether I choose left-handed or right-handed is A. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, left-handed or normal IQ. I'm going to choose left-handed as A. And so this is 0.05 times 0 0.90. Well, when I multiply them, I find out that that's a true statement. All right. So that's a true statement, therefore they're independent. And this is the way I would write it up. The events or variables dominant hand and IQ are independent. All right, because they're equal, I can make that claim. Because the intersection equals A times B, they're independent. And because they're independent, I can say 
the events are not related. The events are not related. Okay. All right, using actual values. All right. So I'm still going to uh, keep my focus. on normal IQ and right-handed. So I'm going to focus on those so that I'm working with the same values so you can see. So once again, we're still working with the same commentary and basically saying that the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times B. So the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. And once again, this is an if. This is not always true. Well, my intersection is 90 over 2,000. A, we said, was going to be corresponding to that as 100, so 100 over 2,000. And then 1,800 over 2,000. So this ends up being 0 0.045 equals 0 0.05 times 0.9 or 0 0.90. All right. And then 0 0.045 equals 0 0.045. That's a true statement. Therefore, they're independent. And basically, I'd write the same thing again right here. So this also needs to be written here. The events, dominant hand and IQ are independent. The events are not related. Okay, so that's the multiplication rule. Please, 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 please memorize it. This is probably the easiest way to check independence. A and B equals A times B, if independent. If, that's, if that happens, it's, true, it's a true statement, then they're independent. You've got to know how to do that, and you need to memorize that rule. Demonstrate um, using conditional probability, all right? Demonstrate using conditional probability. So under conditional probability, you have this. Remember, we said the probability of A and B over the probability of B equals the probability of A. Technically, we could put probability of A given B equals this. This part right here in front is always true. This part is only true if they're independent. If they're independent, this is true. So this part is an if, this part is the always. Okay? So I'm going to circle that differently, just hopefully that'll help keep, keep that straight. This part this part is if independent. Okay. The part here is always. This is always. Okay, hopefully that'll keep that straight. So we want to use our table to, to go through that and um, determine using the probabilities. Well, I'm going to continue. I'm going to go ahead and continue um, with the upper part of the table. And by the way, I know you can't see it there. So I'm going to do this on a little slip of paper. So I'm looking for the probability of A and B over the probability of B equals the probability of A. Remember, intersection over given equals A. This is true if independent. This is true if independent. So looking at that value, my intersection is 0 
B, we said was 0.9. And A, we said, was 0.05. Let's just slide that up. So this ends up being 0.05 equals 0.05. And that's a true statement. Because it's a true statement, I need to go back and say the events Dominant hand and IQ are independent. The events are not related. So I have to go back and make that same statement once again. But the way I show it this time is with the conditional. The intersection divided by the given equals A, and that's true if independent. We'd already said that this represented A. We said this represented B, okay? The next thing it asks us to do is do the same thing but using actual values, all right? Well, it's gonna work the same way. So we're gonna have the probability of A given B over the probability of B equals the probability of A, and this is true, once again, if independent. All right, well, my intersection is gonna be 90, over 2,000, that's my numerator. We said B was 1,800, so this is gonna be 1,800 over 2,000. I know we all love the double fractions. And we said A is 100, so we have 100 over 2,000. Well, just looking at that, the 2000s drop off. And so this becomes 90 over 1,800 equals 100 over 2,000. And once again, we end up with a true statement of 0.05 equals 0.05. Now remember, you can't just stop there. At that point, you need to say, uh, therefore, the events dominant hand and IQ are independent. There is no relation between the events. The events are not related, okay? So, very, this is a little more complex. I believe most of you can do it. However, please, please make sure you know the multiplication rule, which is the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B, All right? This, everyone needs to be able to, and everyone can do this. I would like for most, I would like to see you all do this, but this is the most important one, all right? Uh, this is extraordinarily important. And that's conditional independence. All right, thank you. Oh, also in the next video, we'll do the same with an FRQ.